at you all the way from our dorm rooms to your conference rooms. Sabo Lee and Dan Tiemann here, two college students who are ready to talk to you guys about business and lifestyle from our personal experiences. Each week we'll discuss about our lifestyle as college students as well as our tips and strategies starting in the business field. We'll bring on successful entrepreneurs in the millennial generation to share with us their journey and how they got started and where they're at now. Our goal is to help you students, millennials, and entrepreneurs gain inspirational advice by our spontaneous conversations and meaningful guidance. Let's dive on in. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 29 of Dorm Rooms and Conference Rooms. And as always, I have Saba Ali here. And Saba, how are you doing? I am doing great. This week has been amazing, and I'm so excited to talk about it today. Yeah, guys. So Asaba has been promoting her book like crazy through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the podcast, other podcasts, just everything. She's been, you know, all over the place, jumping on different things in order to promote her book and get it all out there. But and now it finally released as of yesterday, Monday, April third, April third, and she became an Amazon best-selling author. Saba, how does it feel to be an Amazon best-selling author? Say that you did it. You you know set your nose to the grindstone for a month. And you were able to do it. You know, it's a really amazing feeling just because I made the goal of like, you know, writing a book in 30 days and then making an Amazon bestseller within those like 30 days also. So like in previous episodes, I know I talked about my entire journey and stuff like that, but it really was a lot of planning and preparation in order to hit Amazon bestseller because even the day of on Monday when I did have it up on Amazon, I did run into some like obstacles that like I'd love to share with you guys just because obviously I didn't know about it. This is my first book ever that I've ever authored and put up on Amazon. So I didn't know about these obstacles that I hit, but um, eventually I did hit Amazon bestseller within like the first day I had it up. Yeah. So going through the process, I know we already talked about this once on our show, but now you can officially say that you're an Amazon bestseller. So we probably should have saved it till, you know, now, but we're going to go back through this process for anyone who, you know, didn't hear it the first time. So, you know, first of all, congrats, by the way. Like, it's really cool to say my co-host is an Amazon bestselling author. But what was the process? I know you almost had a little bit of a detriment towards the end there. Your editor got you the book a little late. What did you have to do when the editor got you that book late? Like, were you just grinding away, trying to make sure you made all those edits? Or did you have, you know, did you have other things going on? Or what was going on when, you know, through your mind then? Yeah, so I wrote my book in 26 days. So I had it all typed up and then I sent it to my editor um, literally the week, kind of the week of having it released on Amazon. So I found a really great editor through Upwork. So if you guys are looking to write a book or you're just trying to find other freelancers, Upwork is a really great platform to use. Um, So I found my editor through Upwork and she took about three to four days to get it back to me. And I was um, supposed to get back around like Wednesday, but I actually got a Thursday morning. So that kind of like, obviously it wasn't that big of a time gap, but for me it was just because I really want to obviously go through the entire book myself to see her edits. And she did actually a really great job on it. I was really um, glad that she like put it all in the Kindle form and stuff like that. So I didn't have to deal with all of that. But I know that entire Friday, I literally took like nine hours to sit there and edit my entire book, just to, like go through all of her edits. So I mean, that process was really like time consuming just because I really wanted to make sure like everything was right. There was no errors just because it was my first book and stuff. But um, I got that done with on Friday and then I tried to put it up so I put it up to review on Amazon Friday at night just because you do need like I think it's like 48 to 72 hours for Amazon to review it so that's what I did but I had a little bit of struggles trying to find um the categories I wanted to put under just because I mean that's like one of the big reasons on how you like hit Amazon bestseller so I did that and stuff but it turned out pretty great, and I did, like, hit the categories I wanted to be in when I it came out on Monday. So, last time I checked, you were at two out of those three categories. Were you able to hit the third category to make yourself a Amazon bestseller in all three categories? Yeah, so right now, I'm still at two. I'm trying to hit the last one, but right now, I'm actually trying to switch my category around because the last one is, I was looking at the category right now, and it's pretty competitive because it's under um 
college guidebook. So with those, there's like the SAT and ACT and stuff like that. A lot of those type of books that sell like frequently. So um, I'm trying to switch around just so I can put it into a category that fits my book a little bit better. Because that category I didn't pick to be in that one. Amazon just put like put me in that one. So I'm trying to switch it up right now, but I'm at two out of three, which is pretty good, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. That's awesome hitting two of those out of the three. I know you had some problems too when it came to the category. So these are all the things that, you know, our listeners might encounter as they write their books. But what did you have to do? You hit like some sort of problem. I saw your Facebook Live about it. I don't exactly have knowledge on the problem, but it had to do with the categories and buying the books or something like that, I believe. Yeah, so I obviously I want to be in specific categories just so it suit my book better so people could find it better and stuff like that. So I had it. So actually, I told everybody that I had it up like on Amazon on Monday, but my actual review went through um, Friday overnight. So it was actually up on Amazon on Saturday, but I didn't do like the entire push and stuff until Monday just because that was my actual launch date. So if you guys are like listening to this, it was actually up before then. <laughs> but the thing that I didn't know was to get the best selling categories to show up on your page, you need to have at least one sale and it takes about like 24 to 40 hours for the categories to show up. So I didn't know that. So obviously my first sale was on Monday. So that's why I couldn't see the actual categories. So gladly, I still saw my um, categories up like a couple hours after I contacted Amazon because I actually did call them because I was freaking out a little bit just because I thought I wasn't going to like hit Amazon bestseller and stuff like that. So um, you do need one sale and then it takes like a couple hours or like 24 to 40 hours for the actual categories to show up on your actual Amazon page. So that's what I learned throughout the process. So I'm really glad that it like showed up the day of still. <laughs> Yeah, right. I can only imagine you running around. And I know Laura Peterson had uh, a couple issues with Amazon as well when she was trying to get her book recopied. So going, you know, if our listeners were to write their book, throw it up on Amazon, how does Amazon reply to like your guys' calls? Are they very, um, are they okay with the calling, you calling them? Do they get back to you right away? How's Amazon side of things? Yeah, so honestly, I was freaking out on Monday because I thought Amazon wouldn't, like, pick up my call because there's only, like, one Amazon number, like, one 800 number that's, for, like, <laughs> everything on Amazon. So I was kind of freaked out. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be on this line for hours and stuff like that. But honestly, it only took me probably, like, a couple minutes to actually get a hold of somebody in, like, the Kindle department. So they were really good about that. And they, like, explained the entire process to me so I wasn't, like, freaking out and stuff like that. And um, I actually emailed them which categories I wanted to be under and they did respond back and put me into those, those categories. So their support system was really good throughout this entire process just to make sure like my book was up, ready in the right categories I wanted to be and to like make sure the best selling categories were showing up on the page. So if you guys are um, in the process of writing a book or want to sell something on Amazon and run into a problem, it's really not that difficult to get a hold of somebody through Amazon. So I know that you had Brandon T. Adams write your forward for it, correct? Yes. Yeah. How would you always suggest having like a bigger name, write your guys forwards or what do you suggest when it comes to write, getting the forward written for somebody? Yeah, definitely. So the forward, it's like kind of a little bit of a recommendation for the actual book you're about to read. So for me, my book, it was obviously about college and the people who I met throughout college. So Brandon, he was like the perfect fit for me because he was the main person who inspired me to start doing things in college. And then also he is a bigger name person. He has his own TV show. He has like six different companies and stuff like that. So I do recommend somebody who is higher up, but I feel like you should have some type of connection with them that relates to the book because obviously that's what it's about you want to have someone writing a forward that really means something to you in that like recommending that book otherwise it's not really that relevant so definitely reach out to somebody who is like has that kind of big name status but make sure you do have some type of connection with them I recommend uh, using a forward as well just because it's the psychology behind it I forget I was in class, I believe, and our sales teacher was talking about it. And if someone recommends it or if someone prefaces something as being, you know, nice and gentle and cold and warm hearted, it, you know, you'll view that person that way if somebody already tells you they're that way. But if you go in and it's, and, you know, someone that you view as an influencer says that person's rude, cold, mean, 
you'll start to view that person as cold, rude, mean, just because of how you preface them. So, you know, I suggest the four just because it'll help your book sell better. It'll give you a little bit of a preface for the book. People, you know, go into it with the mindset that this is going to be amazing and all that stuff. And it's just something I highly suggest myself or, you know, if anyone is going to do it. And you know, Sabo, what's actually the name of your book? I don't think after all this, we still didn't <laughs> even say the name of the book. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. So the name of my book is Enrolling in Confidence. And the subtitle is How to Live the Lifestyle You Want in College. So how I kind of came up with that title was the confidence comes from the last chapter in my book. So it's chapter 11 named Confidence. All of the chapters before that build up to that last chapter. So actually, um, Paul, he <laughs> thought of the title. Or he helped me think of the title. So I'm giving credit to him right now. But um. I thought of it just because it kind of fits, like, throughout college. I mean, obviously, you're enrolling in college, and, like, a lot of people build their confidence throughout college. So I thought that was just, like, the perfect fit um, for the title of my book. Yeah, uh, and then for the cover of the book and all, Paul did that too, correct? Yeah, he did. He's, like, an amazing graphic design yeah. designer. So I was yeah, like, he designed that all. He did all that. Yeah. yeah, definitely suggest getting someone, you know, that you do your graphic designs, help you out for, you know, creating your book cover, go on Fiverr or something like that. Find it, you know, some dude either for free or cheap that you love, you know, just getting recommended in the book then as well or show them some love back in some way by giving them a returning business or by suggesting someone else to go there. But Saba, just give some, you know, good words here that someone could take away from, you know, if they were to write a book or why they should write a book. Yeah, so if you guys are, like, thinking about writing a book, I highly recommend to do so and to really put, like, a time frame and when you want to finish it. So for me, obviously, I did 30 days. That might be um, a stretch for a lot of people just because I know they are busy. So maybe, like, make a time for, like, three months or something to really just sit down and write a book because I know for me that was one of my 2017 goals and here I'm achieving it right now. So, I mean, if you guys are thinking about writing a book, it's not that scary. I broke it down, like what I said in previous podcasts, I broke it down kind of just like blogs. I wrote it on the daily, so it wasn't really that much um, that much work if you really stretch it out between, like, weeks and months and stuff like that. Because it's just, like, a really rewarding process to really just look back and be like, oh, my gosh, it's up on Amazon and I wrote that book. Like, it's just so cool to say, like, oh, my gosh, I'm an author, you know? So, definitely, if you're <laughs> thinking about it, I highly recommend to so uh yeah no guys definitely check out her book on amazon rolling in confidence you can find both of us at dr to cr or you can dr to cr.com or you guys can find us separately at sabali.com and danielteeman.com but saba you already gave us such great words on why to write a book and how you were able to achieve such greatness while writing it give us some good closing statements here yeah, definitely. So like what I said before, if you guys are thinking about writing a book, um, I definitely think that you guys should. If you guys like want to talk to me about it, just like pick my brain on like how I did it in 30 days, feel free to reach out to me and definitely check out my book. It's up on Amazon. I will add the link onto the show notes here. But that is all we have today, guys. Thank you for so much for listening to Andormers to Conference Rooms. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Dorm Rooms and Conference Rooms. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you haven't joined our accelerator program yet, you can find that at livedegrind.com forward slash college, where we connect you with today's latest influencers and experts in their fields.